Good evening, everybody. This is American Sportsman, Black Buck, coming to you live this evening with a little bit of uh, culinary expertise. And I'm not going to say I'm a great chef, but I'm not the worst chef. I'm just a man amongst men willing to prepare something nice and simple for the regular guy, for the hunter. So tonight, uh, I got the extra special tender part of the deer that I harvested, uh, the tenderloin. And um, I prefer to... Uh, for table fare that is, I prefer to take a doe or a young buck and um, spare the use of uh, some of those big testosterone filled bucks I've had an opportunity of taking down at, at uh, certain uh, years during hunting season. But uh, my own opinion, the best uh, table fare meat would be a young buck or a, a, a nice doe, nice young doe. So uh, this one came off about a, I think it was about a year and a half, just under two year doe. So. Uh, it's pretty good size too, about 100 pounds, so that's, that's about as big as you would like to have uh, for table fare. But anyway, small talk. Um, this is going to be a real simple recipe I have. I use some coarse ground pepper, some Lowry's garlic uh, salt with oregano and basil, uh, one of my favorite seasonings, uh, Zatarain's Creole seasoning. I always use uh, natural sea salt, and uh, for this one right here, I'm going to be broiling these... Uh, tenderloins I'm going to use a little bit of baste with uh, some spray on extra virgin olive oil so uh, the recipe is pretty simple you take your tenderloin and uh, wash it off you know whether it's frozen or fresh kill but most of us will be dealing with frozen meat um, and I like to get mine within the, the first month of the kill so this one is pretty fresh right here so what I like to do is take the tenderloin put it in a glass bowl cover it up Put it in the refrigerator and let some of the blood drain off of it and as you uh, have it set in there the blood will puddle up in the bowl you want to pour that off rinse your meat off and stick it back in the refrigerator and let it drain 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 until there's very little blood left in it it usually takes about 24 hours and uh, each time i do that i put a little bit of salt on it um, as it's draining but um, that'll take the gaminess out of it and um, like I said, the reason why I like does or young buck for table fare is that, you know, you kill a big buck or, you know, nice sized buck, especially during a rut where a lot of us take, take them or early season, they're filled up with a lot of testosterone, uh, what I like to call a lot of piss and vinegar. And uh, the does just take a lot, taste a lot better. So um, once it drains off, uh, you want to season it up. Start off with the brown pepper, Creole seasoning, salt little Lowry's and then I take the the ground coarse pepper and I make it like a little little crust as you can see um, sort of like the effect of uh, pepper crusted bacon and uh, put the oven on broil and um, cook it real good um, not well done you want to cook it so that the meat is pink on the inside and one of the keys you want to do is make sure you let the meat rest and by that I mean once you take the meat out of the oven or the grill, I should have cooked this on the grill, but we're going to do it on the inside uh, today. Uh, you want to let the meat sit, you know, maybe five minutes under uh, foil and it uh, really makes the flavor, you know, come out even more. Um, I don't know exactly what it does, but <laughs> I've always let my meat rest. I've listened to a lot of chefs and they say, man, let your meat rest and you'll, you'll get an extra bit of flavor kick in there. So. Uh, with the magic of time, I'm going to prepare this meal and uh, come back to you with the end result. Black butt. All right, now I'm about to put it in the oven right now. And uh, what you want to do is you want to cover it up for the first uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes because you want to seal in that flavor. Because um, that's where your, your meat is most flavorable when you first put it in there, of course. And uh, by sealing that in, sort of like... Um, singeing it with the boil with the broil excuse me um that'll hold in a lot of those juices and flavors in there so um also i used a little bit of red wine vinegar um as it was uh draining out so uh that should give it a nice little twang to it um my my, my whole key thing is is a lot of guys make a lot of meals and um, they do a lot of things and douse it with sauce and curries and all that kind of stuff but if you harvest a meal um, such as this and you, you know it, to, to me it's a, it's a spiritual thing so you want to be one with the meat <laughs> as I like to say 
So um, you want to really taste that meat. You want to taste the soul of the meat. So, um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not the greatest chef, but uh, you won't go hungry if you're around me. <laughs> Back at you with some more action. And then what you want to do is, uh, you know, all us guys like to snack. I took a couple of uh, roasted pepper garlic sausages that I had and um, boiled them in a cup of water. And then once that water evaporated, I uh, put some oil in there to brown them up. So, you know, we're going to have some sausages with the tenderloin and then I'm going to whip up some uh, garlic potatoes. It's going to be a garlic evening. <laughs> okay, um, just coming to the end of the recipe here. Uh, just let the uh, two tenderloins, which are up under the foil, rest for about 10 minutes, five, about 5-10 minutes. Uh, those are the red uh, pepper garlic sausages. Uh, whipped up some uh, garlic potatoes, mashed potatoes and some garlic bread. So we about to OG, <laughs> excuse me, OD on uh, garlic tonight. But uh, after you let them uh, rest, and you got some nice, coarse black pepper crusted tenderloin. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one right here and uh, Put them on this cutting plate and uh, anybody who's a chef barbecuer you, you, you got to have one of these in your repertoire old hickory this is a 10 inch butcher knife um, one of the best knives that you can probably use uh, if you are a guy that goes into the outdoors and you do a lot of camp cooking or do a lot of barbecuing Old Hickory. That's a little plug on them. So uh, let me slice this thing up and get right back to you. Okay. And uh, as you can see, me and Old Hickory got busy. Cut them up in nice little chunks here. And uh, if you want to see where your meat done, look at that right there. Woo, woo. I'm not really big into uh, pink meat, but uh, that right there is probably uh, medium well. And uh, you see the black pepper encrusted on it. I'm going to put a little bit of this garlic bread here, some of these garlic potatoes, and these uh, red pepper roasted garlic sausages. And um, have me a man meal. Meat, bread, and potatoes. <laughs> and uh, if anybody needs that recipe, you just let me know. Um, I might have just a dab of some uh, Chipotle Tabasco sauce. This is the other one that was resting there in the natural juices. And um, Old Hickory came through once again and uh, simple recipe you know Lowry's roasted garlic salt uh, Zatarin's Creole seasoning coarse black pepper sea salt and uh, virgin olive oil pan spray and you broil that thing up or grill it get you a little bit of uh, garlic bread whip you up some potatoes real quick and um, you got yourself a meal that uh, is a blessing and well worth the harvest so uh yeah i just want to thank everybody for watching thank god for providing me with the ability to go out there and harvest my own um, meat with no preservatives no uh steroids and lean as you can be so thanks for watching once again the american sportsman black buck and uh just a little something from the chop shop have a good evening. And there's the finished product. Venison tenderloin, garlic bread, roasted sausage, roasted red pepper sausage, and garlic potatoes with a little bit of fufu beer. Shot top. Not bad. Not bad. Man meal. <laughs>